Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by RV Deep Clean. Over 40 ways to clean and downsize your Revit model all in one place. Get a free copy today by using the link in this video description. Do you have too many view filters in your Revit model and now you want to quickly remove all the filters that are unused? Without Dynamo, that could be a lengthy process because you have to go through each view, check the view filters tab, and build your own list of view filters that are safe to delete. Well, it doesn't have to be like that because with the script I will show you how to build today, we can do all of that in less than a second. For example, in this Revit file here, if I go to any view, maybe this one here, go to view filters, I can see this one here is in use. It's a filter called learning content. But then if I check all the other view filters, I can see that I have other ones like furniture, interior, and walls. Many of them may be obsolete. So let's see which one Dynamo can detect and remove for us. When I go to this script here and click run, I can see now that all the other three I saw just a second ago were unused and Dynamo has removed them for me super quickly. If I now return to here, check view filters, tap one more time, I can see now that learning content is the only one I have left. So this is super quickly how Dynamo can help us clean up view filters to make our model quick and clean again. And the good thing is, this script here is actually super easy to build. Let me show you now how to do it step by step. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. Now it's a usual thing I normally do in my tutorials. Let's make now a way for Dynamo to read a text file that contains a Python script. We can then use a text from that file as a script input for this node here. And then it will just run the Python script that we have in the text file. And now the next step, we will go into Visual Studio Code, my favorite Python script editor for Dynamo. If you are new to this kind of workflow, don't worry. Just go down to this video description and use a link there to see my basic video tutorial on how to script things in Dynamo this way. It will also show you how to set up and use Visual Studio Code because this is really the best editor you can have for writing Python script to use later in Dynamo. The video will also show you step by step how to create and understand and use this Python script template that I have opened already. So that should give you all the information you need to then come back to this video and follow me from here. The first step will be to collect all the views in this model. So let's start something here. We can say a for loop like for view in a new filtered element collector on this document of everything that is of class view. So this line will give us a way to loop through all the views in this model. Let's see now in a watch list what kind of view we'll get back from this command. So let's say view.name here. I can now save this and check it here. Here we go. So now I have here all 54 views in this model and the names are project view, level one, these are elevations and so on. But if you look closely, there are views here that are system views, which we shouldn't touch. For example, the system browser is here. And here we have the project browser, even though the name is a bit different. It's called here project view in the Revit API. Let's see a few more down here. And yes, there are things that I shouldn't touch down here as well. For example, revision schedules. These are the schedules of revision on sheets. Let me show you here. If I go to maybe a site plan here, we have a table here and that table is showing a view of this type. So one of these is what we are seeing right there. So it will be a very bad idea to mess around with these views because then Revit won't be happy. So now let's do here some kind of filtering to get just what the views we need. Let's say if view or graphics overrides allowed. Graphic overrides are of course the visibility and graphics overrides you normally adjust in your view in Revit. When I press VV here, these are the kind of overrides I can adjust. So if a view can allow me to do this, then that's the kind of view I'm now interested in. Let's now save the script here again and run this again here to see the difference. Remember we have here now 54 views 
let me run this now. The number is now 45. So we have successfully excluded some of the views we shouldn't touch. For example, when I go down to here, to the bottom of the list, we no longer see the revision schedules because they are now filtered out from my list, thanks to the if condition I have in Python. Let's return to Python now. The next thing to do here is to get the filters from this view. So let's say for id in view.get filters. This method here, view.getFilters, will give us the element IDs of all the filters that a view here is currently using. Let's see the IDs we get. So how about we say watch.append again, and then ID. We can now save it, check it again now. And I have here four identical IDs. That tells me that from all the view filters I have in this model, only one of them is currently in use. And it is in use by four different views. That's why we have here four different entries of the same ID. Let's see what this filter is. If I go back to Revit and do select by ID, put in this number here, enter to select. I can then go to Add-ins and use Revit Lookup to see its properties. So snooping the current selection this time. When I check the name of the filter, I can see it is called learning content. So that's the one we need to keep. Coming back to Python now, I need to have a way to keep track of the IDs of the view filters I should keep in the model. So let's define here a new list. Let me call it filter ID string in use. Starting out just an empty list there. And down here, I can append the ID to this list. But of course, we can say str ID. This will convert the ID object into just a string. And that string will show me the same numbers I have here in Dynamo. Next step, I want to go down to this new line and start looping through all the view filters I have available in this project. That's super easy too. Let's start a new loop here. So let's say for filter lm for element in a new filter element collector in this same document here but this time we can say of class and then instead of using the class of view we should use parameter filter element so now in this loop i can start checking individual view filter elements i have in this model and now what I want to do is to check if the ID of this current filter element is contained within this list here of the IDs of filters in use. Super easy to do there. Let's say if filter lm dot id dot do string is in filter id strings in use. So that will do for me the element containment check of a string representation of this element ID of the view filter element. So if this condition here is true, then that means I shouldn't delete this filter. However, I want to delete the unused one. So let's say not in instead of in. By doing that, I can see that this whole condition will return true if the filter element here is not in use because this ID is not in the list of IDs in use from up here. If that's the case, I want to append the ID of this element to something I can use later to delete it. That's something, it should be a new list. So let's say IDs to delete. Should be a new list of element ID, which is empty at the beginning on this line. Now in the for loop, I can start appending items to this list. Let's say IDs to delete dot add, and then say filter lm dot ID. Before moving on, let's see what we will get in this new list. So I will save it here and run this now. So I have back to me four different IDs. And you may have noticed already, these are not the same ID of the learning content filter that I saw before that was in use. These three here, they are obsolete IDs of filter elements I can safely remove. So let's do it now in the next step. Coming down to here, I can create a new transaction now. So let's say new transaction in this document. The name will be delete obsolete few filters. 
I can then start the transaction in this next line call document.delete and pass in the list of IDs to delete right there and then finally we do tr.commit so I can save my changes to the model let's save it now and we can run this so now that it's done I can go back to the list of transactions to see that it has indeed happened I have deleted all the obsolete few filters in this model we can check if this actually has worked by running this script one more time so let me close it down saving it there of course then open it back up and run this again so this time I have just an empty list because all the view filters that were obsolete they have been removed for me by the previous run of the same script here so now when I run the same script again there's nothing here anymore for it to remove that's why it's an empty list here in a watch node the last step to complete the script is to make it self-contained and not reliant on this text file I have here so now let's do Control a Control c back to here add a proper python node there to the graph double click to open it and here I can say remove everything to just paste in my new text I will change this to python 2 for now but of course at some point you know you should start using only python 3 this is only so people using older Revit versions can still use this script just in case that's you then you can do it too so I will now save it reuse the watch note there maybe uh, just rename this to view filter IDs deleted and then I can just remove the rest of the notes I don't need them anymore so these two will be all I need for the script here we go anyway if you are looking for this kind of scripts with the objective of cleaning up your Revit model to make it light and fast again then doing this alone may not be enough instead I would recommend looking at one of the Revit plugins that does model cleanup in a more complete way for example you can try RV Deep Clean this one here it's a collection of over 40 commands to purge and clean up your Revit file. For example, on the general tab here, I can do purge unused, remove unused scope boxes, clean up unplaced rooms, areas, and spaces, along with the boundary lines if they are unused. Or I can do removing secondary design options, pinning grid lines and levels, or purging unused and empty parameters. If I go now to the next tab for view operations, I can do things like removing view templates or view filters that are unused, deleting views not on sheet, or removing sheets without any views on them. I can also remove any temporary views based on their names, or going further, I can try to delete often tags, often dimensions, unused lifestyles, live patterns, or few patterns. Coming down to the links group, I can do things like removing invisible cat links, pinning rivet links, or moving them to the desired work sets in my model. So essentially, it does what Dynamo can do and more, all in one single place. Let's keep it a go now. Okay, so that's now done. As you can see at the end of the process, it has given me a summary of everything that has been cleaned up from my model. Things like unused room separation lines, area boundaries, unused fuel pattern elements, unused light patterns, or several views not on sheets, they have been deleted for me in one click. Even better, you can try RV Deep Clean completely for free. Just go down to this video description and use the link there to get your free copy today. Having said that, if you only need to remove all the unused few filters for now, then this script here will be all you need. Just go down to this video description and use the link there to download this script directly and start using it on your Revit projects. If you, however, want to focus on mastering Python scripting in Dynamo, then check out my full Python course in the video description. If you like this lesson and want more like this every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, have a good day and I'll see you in the next tutorial.